Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Today we're going to make a blueberry trifle and this is what it looks like. So what we have here is two layers of cake, blueberry sauce, and whipped cream, and then I've topped it with a sprinkling of crushed ginger cookies. So as you can see, trifles are about layering of ingredients, and that gives us this wonderful combination of color, texture, and flavors. But the three main components of any trifle are cake and fruit, and then maybe a custard, whipped cream, or a combination of custard and whipped cream, you can have both. And what's great too is that you can make a trifle, a large one that feeds, you know, a dozen people, or like today we're just gonna make individual ones. We're going to start with our um, blueberry sauce. And what's great about this is you can make your sauce up to a week ahead and just keep it in the fridge. So the first thing you will need, you'll need a medium-sized saucepan and you will need one pint, which is two cups, or 315 grams of fresh blueberries. And always wash your blueberries. If they have some stems attached, uh, remove those and any soft ones or mushy, you don't want those. And then just put those in your saucepan. In a pinch, you could use the frozen ones as well. And then of course we need to sweeten our uh, blueberry. Now this is a, a little, um, it's hard to say exactly how much sugar to use. I'll give you a guide. Always taste your blueberries. If they're really sweet, you know, you can use a little less and vice versa. So mine are fairly sweet. So I'm going to use a third of a cup, 65 grams of granulated white sugar. You know, sometimes I have to go up to like a half a cup, 100 grams, or you can make, if they're really sweet, you could back, back that off to maybe a quarter of a cup. So, and then we need a thickener because it's a sauce. We want a little thick. So I'm adding one and a half teaspoons, five grams of cornstarch. And then just a pinch of salt. A pinch means just an eighth of a teaspoon, but you know, just a few grains. And then we need some water. I'm adding a third of a cup, which is 80 grams of just tap water. And that's it. So now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna put this on medium heat. Unfortunately, I'm using a black pot and the blueberries are dark, so you're, <laughs> I'll have to show you later what, it, what it's going to look like because you can't really see inside the pot. It's just dark. Um, so what I'm going to do is put this on medium heat, bring it up just to a boil, and then I'm going to turn you know, the heat down to a simmer. And then I'm just going to cook the blueberries until the, the sauce is really nice and thick and then clear which takes once, you know, takes about 10 minutes of simmering, but I will show you what that looks like when we get to that point. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes. So it's done. Let's pour it in here and then I'll show you what you're looking for. Be very careful because blueberry sauce does stain so uh, there we have you can see it's quite thick the sauce and then if I take a spoon it's really nice and shiny and clear that's what you're looking for so you know I mean depending on how high or low you have your heat could take a little more a little less than 10 minutes so uh, now what I want to do is flavor it with a little bit of lemon zest and lemon uh, juice. That really kind of brings out the uh, flavors of the flavor of the blueberries. So you will need a lemon. Always wash your lemon. And if you can, buy organic. And then we're going to take a little bit of the outside yellow part. You don't want, don't grate the white underneath because that's quite bitter. I'm just using one of these uh, microplanes, or you can just use a box grater. We only want a little, uh, I would say maybe like a half a teaspoon, just like maybe a gram, just a little bit. I don't like, I mean, you could if you want more lemon flavor. I just like a little bit. And then the juice, I'm just gonna press down on your lemon. It kind of softens it up. So you always want to grate the zest and then do the juice. <laughs> so you're going to cut it in half. 
And I'm only, I'm putting about a half a tablespoon, about eight grams of lemon juice. I mean, you could taste your sauce and then you could adjust if you want a little more. But that's about all I'm going to put in. So now what we're going to do is just let this cool down completely before we make our trifles. Like I said, normally what I do is that I make this at least a day before and then I just cover it and put it into the refrigerator. So I'm just going to let this cool down and when we come back we will assemble our blueberry trifles. Okay, so now we have our blueberry sauce, which if you've ever had a trifle, typically there's alcohol in it. Sometimes you sprinkle the cake with it. Uh, I'm actually going to add it to our blueberry sauce. So I'm going to add two tablespoons, about 30 grams of a lemon liqueur. Now you don't have to, if you're serving this to kids, probably, I mean, you don't want to add that. But for adults, they will. And I like the lemon liqueur because it brings out the, the really, goes nicely with the blueberry sauce. You could add a, like a Grand Marnier as well for a little orange flavor. So there we go, we'll put that aside. And now for, we're gonna do, I'm not going, I mean, sometimes uh, trifles have a custard sauce. I'm just going to do, I'm gonna make this a little easier and we're just going to do a whipped cream. So I'm just gonna do it by hand. So in a large bowl, uh, first ingredient, one cup, which is 240 grams of heavy whipping cream or heavy cream, that's cream with about a 35 to 40 percent butterfat content. Or what that means is when you whip it, it will reach stiff peaks. Then I'm going to kind of add something a little different. I'm going to add a half a cup, 120 grams of mascarpone cheese, which is this, oh, it's just this wonderful soft um, cheese that's velvety, smooth. It's just so good. It's usually sold in like these um, eight ounce, 225 gram tubs. You, I find now I can find my regular grocery store, usually in the deli section. I don't know why they put it there, but that's usually where you will find it or of course specialty food stores. Now if you can't find it or it can be a little spendy, you could just use an equal amount, a half a cup of um, cream cheese. I mean that'll work just as good. A little, just a slight difference in flavor. And then of course we need to sweeten that uh, one to two tablespoons, so about 15 to 25 grams. Sometimes I, I add part of that and then I taste it and then see if I want to add a little more. And then I like to add about one uh, teaspoon, four grams of pure vanilla extract. You don't need to add that, but I just think the vanilla adds. So now we're just going to beat this until almost firm peaks. Like I said, if you want to pull out your stand mixer and use your whisk attachment or you could use a hand mixer. I'm just going to use a wire whisk. Okay, so this is what we're looking for. Nice peaks. Now, sometimes, especially if you're using a hand mixer or a stand mixer, you may overbeat it and it gets, because if you more you beat, it's gonna end up like butter. If you do that, don't worry. Just add a little more heavy cream and then whip that in and then you'll be okay. It happens to us all. So now, looks good. We have our cream. Might wanna taste it. In case you wanna add a little more sugar, put that that's good. So now, um, this is about layering. So what I have, I'm doing individual. This recipe makes about six, four to six, depending on how large you want to make. I'm just using, I'm just using regular glasses. And you could use wine glasses, whatever you want, or like you could use one big bowl. So it makes about six. And then you will need cake. There are so many choices. I'm just using a butter cake. Uh, you could use an eight or a nine inch 
uh, butter cake. I got an 8 inch here, which is 20 to 23 centimeters. If you don't want to use a butter cake, you could use a pound cake. You could use some kind of sponge cake, angel food cake. You could even use lady fingers. So if you prefer not to use a butter cake and you have a sponge, and you know what? It's actually better if it's a few days old, going a little stale because then it'll really absorb your blueberry sauce. So don't worry, this is a great way actually of using up cake that's gone a little stale. So then what you want to do is, you know, find out the size. So you want about, now mine are actually tapered. So I will show you what I have to do. So anyways, you want to use a cookie cutter to cut out. And then, because that's a little big, I'm going to, I'm doing a two layer. So I'm going to cut that just in half like so. This will be my top. Now my bottom is tapered a little. It's a little, so I got to use this other stick because you want it to just fit nicely in there like so. So then you have on the bottom and then what we're going to do is just spoon a little bit of our blueberry sauce. How much? You know, you just want to soak that. I find like two, I usually do about two spoonfuls. Again, you know, you don't have to be exact here. And then I like to add a few fresh blueberries. You don't have to, or, you know, you could use some other type of fruit. You could use um, some raspberries, strawberries, or even some peaches cut up, nectarines. Actually, if you wanted to do this for the 4th of July, you could use some raspberries and then you'd have that red, white, and blue thing going on. <laughs> And then we're going to put some cream. Now I could just spoon the cream in on top of there, a couple of spoonfuls, but because I like to decorate the top with kind of a, I like to pipe it on top. So I'm using a pastry bag and I have it fitted with just an open star tip. You could use a plain tip, but you know what? If you're just doing for the family, I just, Take a spoon and just spoon it in there. Depends how fancy you want to get. And then just kind of press down. And then just a layer. Cream. Okay. Whoop. That looks good. And then we start again. Put the top part. And then just kind of press down. And any air holes, even that out. Again, uh -oh. some blueberries in there. Spoonfuls. That and get my hand here, and a couple more blueberries. There we go. And then what I do. Just if we're finishing that off, is I just do a nice little swirl, like so, and fresh blueberry right on top. And then I like to decorate the top with some crushed ginger cookies. You can use homemade, you can use store-bought. I'm actually using store-bought, make this a little easier. So what I do to crush them, just put them in the bag and you can just use, you can just use your fingers really, but you get the idea. If you don't want, yeah, I mean, you don't have to use ginger cookies. You could use some other flavor. You can use a shortbread cookie or you don't have to use anything if you don't want to. But I think the ginger with the blueberry and everything else, it's pretty good. So there we have it, our blueberry trifle. Now, blueberry, when you make them, it's best not to serve them right away. You need time for that blueberry sauce to soak into that cake and make it all nice and good and, they, and all the layers kind of mingle together. So normally you'd want to, I actually like to make them the day before, but I would say at least four, six hours at least, that's minimum. But of course we're going to try it right. I want to get everything, cake and cream. Okay. 
It's pretty good even if I <laughs> eat it and I haven't let it sit in the refrigerator. It's excellent. You get that nice butter cake, the blueberry sauce, the whipped cream, the ginger. I mean, it's, it's such a nice dessert. And it's a great make-ahead dessert. You know, so if you're having company, you can do that all the day before, so you don't have to be bothered. But try it and store these in the refrigerator. So until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com. Thank you.